Love Inspiree fam and welcome to Love Inspiree YouTube. It's your girl Angie back with another video and as you can see I have an empty chair here and that chair is for my husband. He is going to join us as we talk about our 14th anniversary which is today July 29th 2020. So stick around and let's get to love. I'm so happy to have you here. He is back, y'all. He don't, he don't come on dinner rolls and convo no more. He, he don't got no time for me no more. But I will be back soon. Okay. But we are here now and we are talking about the 14 years we've been married, the 32 years we've been together, <laughs> <laughs> and all that in between. So happy anniversary, thing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. He's so sweet. Anyway, so last night, <laughs> this was so funny because he was snoring so loud. <laughs> I couldn't even like think straight. So I sent him a message, a text message in the middle of the night. And I was like, listen, you're going to have to clean out my Amazon cart for emotional damages and distress that you caused me last night. I go in there today. Why are my products still sitting in there? I even threw in something for him too. <laughs> Please tell me why. Please tell me why. Help me understand. I'll clean it out as soon as I get a chance. Okay, thank you. So let's talk about the beginning stages of our relationship. A lot of people don't know that we were like meant to be long ago. <laughs> and um, we were kids knowing that we were going to end up together. Tell me your thought process on, the end, on your end. Well, you know, I'm a firm believer of everything that's meant to be will be. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel like God had a plan for us from the beginning. Yeah. And uh, it, I think it all started, I remember this so vividly at Mount Air at Corona Baptist Church in Trenton, New Jersey. Uh, we were in the basement. We were, my, our grandparents were standing around talking and you tripped over a little gutter thing that was in the basement and I picked you up. And I just remember everybody saying, oh, oh this and that. <laughs> Fast forward to Mount Pleasant in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And you sitting in front of the church and me asking my mom, can I go sit up there? Wait, <laughs> you ain't telling the story right. That's how it went. No, remember I, t I turned around and I said, oh, come here. Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> I remember you turning around looking at me going like this. <laughs> I asked my mom, can I go sit in the front? She said, yeah. I go sit up there. You can tell the rest. The rest is really history. Yeah, tell her how you crossed your leg. Oh, uh, yeah, I crossed my legs. And my grandfather, he was, they said he was steaming red hot. <laughs> but I think everybody knew, our family, church family knew, like, this was put together. And I can just remember knowing, like, I remember when my grandparents, they got this Cadillac, Katira. And I remember, like, hearing different songs that just, like, I just knew that it, that we were meant to be from a young age and it's so weird that how it just all plays out how like you just know like you could just feel like that's how I know God put this thing together right. because how do you feel at five years old that this is the person you're going to spend your life with you don't even know what life is right. you know what I'm saying like that's just that seems like gets all in my insides every time I think about it right. and that day that that happened when I was sitting in front of the church I remember my dad after church coming down from the pulpit joking around with your grandparents mm -hmm. saying now let's make room for the wedding arrangements <laughs> and here we are yep here we are 14 years later i think into marriage yes and i think i think um you know like you said we're we're believers you know and i, I do feel like god put us together right. and i feel like it's god keeping us together and that doesn't mean that the road was easy it doesn't mean right. that the road was you know not stressful at times that we right. didn't hit bumps and um but when you know that god has put you together you have a duty to make it work right. and i think that's where a lot of our you know whoopings came from later on in life because we knew we were meant together right. but we would have little stupid bouts and breakups and you know right. you know god you know it's like the love that god gave us was like magnetic mm -hmm. and when god puts something together 
uh, even if we went to the opposite opposite ends of the earth, somehow or another, we would have come back to each mm -hmm. other. Absolutely, I definitely agree with that. So let's talk about the dating period with one another. So I can remember. <laughs> I can remember we started talking. It was September 28th, 2003. I never will forget that day. He had came to Mount Pleasant Primitive Baptist Church in Philly. And we were skirting around the issue. You know, by this time, we're teenagers. So we know, like, this is the one. Like, right. this is, we're going to be together. I don't know how it's getting ready. I don't know how it's going to play out. But we're right. going to get together somehow. And so, like I told you guys in the beginning, everybody knew, you know, that we were going to be together so matt johnson rest in peace to him he saw us like fiddle faddling around right. like you staying out in your car chilling right. me looking sitting out on the porch waiting for something to happen right he was like you know what i'm sick of this and drags me to your car right <laughs> it's like throughout the like, whole wait. year like little stuff started happening yeah. i remember in may at in washington uh you asked me was i going to my prom like it slowly started coming together in September in Trenton. I remember coming down the steps by the baptism pool and you going up the steps and you saying hi to each other. <laughs> and then later that month in September, and the strange thing about it is there's a church, a fourth Sunday church that met on the same day mm. as, uh, as Mount Pleasant that day, September 28th, when we first started talking. That was probably... 10 minutes away from my house, not even 10 minutes. Yep. And yet I go past that church and make an hour drive to Philadelphia. It's like God was slowly bringing us together. Absolutely. And we didn't know. Didn't have no clue, no clue, no clue. I, um, going back to when I went to, well, when I was dragged to your car, <laughs> what was your first question to me? You remember? <laughs> Do you have a... <laughs> <laughs> Yo, y'all remember when AOL a, uh, Instant Messenger was popping? Yeah, that's how long ago this was. Like, it was popping back then. So, um, I was like, what's your what's your um, AIM name? He was like, give me yours. So, it was like, this would be that girl for you. So, I gave it to him. And then he hit me up that night. And we just started talking. And I can remember him. I don't know how long after that, but I can remember when you surprised me at my grandparents' house. Right. Like, you was driving down the street. So, if you were from Maze Landing, um, you know, Maze Landing kind of connects to Mispa. And when you get in that violent area, you go over the railroad tracks and stuff. So, he had passed my house on Harding Highway and was all down in Vineland. Oh, passed over the railroad tracks in Richland. I think that's Richland. <laughs> and so, he calls me on the phone and he's like... Um, I, I'm I'm lost. Like you know, where where do you live at? And so I'm thinking he's lying. Like I I have no clue what you know. Like because he's a trickster like that. Like you know what I'm saying. Like he's a jokester. Like people know him very serious, which he is, but he's a jokester. So he's like, yeah, I'm over the railroad tracks. So I'm I'm like the railroad tracks. I know that's like literally like five to seven minutes up the road. So I'm like, you lying, you lying, you lying. So he like, all right, I'm coming back this way. So he says, I see storybook land is seven or nine miles away or something like that. I said, oh shoot, he really is about to pop up on me. <laughs> and boom. I remember that day so vividly. I remember you had a gray sweatsuit on with a hoodie on. <laughs> Signature move. <laughs> Signature move. With some, probably with some white Air Forces. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. That was fun day. Um, and our first date, like like our whole story, humble beginnings. Yes, truly. Our first date is in McDonald's. Yes. I don't even remember what I ordered, but he was like, where do you want to go? I'm like, let's go to McDonald's and go see your movie. Right. So we have this thing now where he thinks that at the time, the movies out were Walking Tall and Johnson Family Vacation. Okay. So he, this is around April 12th. 2004 I want to say first date okay he decides that we're going to go see Walking Tall now he's shaking his head but let me tell you what happened we get to the movie theater he says what do you want to see I was like you know Johnson family vacation look good but I hear um Walking Tall is good but it's up to you and you said two tickets for Walking Tall 
Tell the truth and shame the devil. Tell the truth once and for all and told, shame the, the devil. You told the story half right. I said, I heard, uh, what did I say? Walking tall. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. I said I heard walking tall was good. Uh, Johnson Family Vacation, of course, has some popular comedians in it. It looked like it would be funny. But I gave you the option. You made the final decision. I say it's up to you. Me being the man conceding to the woman. <laughs> Yo, what, what do you want to? I get. What do you want to see? I gave you the final choice. You said, okay, let's go see Walking Tall. So we saw Walking Tall. Probably the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. Now that I will agree on. The, the most terrible movie I've... <laughs> oh my gosh, I could just remember... Ugh, that was that was terrible. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, terrible. But... Then Johnson Family Vacation wound up being one of the funniest movies exactly. I saw at the time. Oh, son, you want to learn how to drive? Here's your first lesson. You see what she's wearing? I made this outfit myself. Get upstairs and finish making the rest of it. The movie was hilarious. So. We ended up seeing it together when we went on vacation with my grandparents in Florida. <laughs> and we ended up watching it together like, dang, we missed this. Like, right. we're walking tall. Like, right. we was cracking up. Nate Johnson. Nate Johnson. Check my dental records. Oh, my goodness. He used to always say that. <laughs> Check my dental records. <laughs> But anyway, so dating you was the happiest time of my life. Like, I felt like when we got together, like, all my troubles were going to go away. And, you know, everything was just going to settle in. And I kind of touched on that in the video last week about as far as, you know, you can be with a soulmate. You can be with the person you love that you're meant to be with. But if you don't have that happiness from within, you know, that person cannot give that to you. And I was so, I was kind of like a... I don't want to say I was damaged, but I had a lot of internal things to work on. And I felt like when we got together, you know, all that was going to go away. And it didn't. And some of that, you know, festered into our relationship. And so, you know, dating, dating you was, we had some really good times, some great, great times, fabulous times. I remember, you know, like going back to Trenton. I remember you brought your nephew with you. And that was, he was in the back of the car singing Lovers and Friends. Oh. Tell me again, my baby. Oh, I <laughs> it was like, what you know about this song? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Sean. And um, yeah, that was so funny. And uh, that one time we went to Six Flags and we got into that car accident. And you want to tell them what happened? Well, before I get to the accident story, there's as, as a period in there that I want to address that um is really important to where we are now and that is the the period of time that I took from September 28th yes. to the point where I actually asked her to be my girlfriend yes. which was probably 6 months wow yeah about 6 months six that's months. a long time and, and and what's strange is the fact that you're probably starting this video hearing me saying that this is the person that I've always wanted to be with. So you would think that once you got with that person, boom, it'd be something immediate. We, we Maybe a week would go by. Still, even though I, I'm a firm believer in foundations and I believe in building on a solid foundation, and that's the reason I took so long to ask you to be my girlfriend because I wanted us to build on a solid foundation. Absolutely. And uh, really get to know each other and really see, you know, the ins and outs of, of our personalities, uh, whether we're combat compatible, which we were, and just be patient. Another thing, another thing we learned patience and all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And going into the accident in, in 2000, I think it was 2005, we go to uh, New Jersey. We were up there for, not New Jersey, I'm sorry, Lawrenceville. We were up there for a while. We decided to go to uh, Jackson, Jackson, New Jersey to Six Flags Great Adventure. And I remember coming back to the house afterwards and it was already, I want to say maybe 1130 at that point. And you lived about an hour and a half at least away from me. And I didn't realize how sleepy and tired I was. But we still, I mean, I couldn't get a hotel room. We couldn't stay at my house. So <laughs> we just tried to force it in. 
<laughs> so, I mean, we were probably maybe a good 15 minutes away from your house. Mm. I didn't even realize I was getting sleepy. This is a... I was asleep, though. Oh, yeah, you were sleepy. not that <laughs> Still to this And day. before I know anything, yeah, I'm riding on the side of the road, and, and just all I see is trees in front of me. The car went off and hit a tree. Total my car. That was my first car. My Geo Prism. I'll never forget it. <laughs> but when I think back to it, I hear the tow truck driver say, man, he's like, you don't realize how lucky you are. Like, I see accidents every day and most people don't survive mm -hmm. an accident like this. And I saw the path that the car took. We veered into oncoming traffic, went off on the side of the road, I mean, we had to be going at least 60-something miles an hour. But riding on the grass for the period of time that we were actually slowed the car down. Mm -hmm. So we didn't hit the tree at full impact. And coming off the road, we actually veered on the side of a telephone pole and went in between the telephone pole and the uh, woods long enough for to slow the car down so we wouldn't hit the tree at full impact. Mm -hmm. Thinking back to all that, it's just like Nobody the Lord God. had something for us to do. Yep. It could have ended all right there. Like an instant. coming in on coming traffic, we could have went head on with somebody. God had a plan. And it's crazy because I live in the, in the area he didn't know at the time. Like I swear like a week later on 322, somebody died the same exact way. The wow. same exact way. And you know, back then I wasn't, you know, I believed in God obviously, but I wasn't like, you know, how I am now. And I just, you know, like you said, God definitely has something for us to do and right. we are meant to be. And I was laughing while he was telling that story because I was just thinking about the time. Remember that time you did a donut in the Geo Prism? Oh. Ah! <laughs> Y'all ever did a donut in a car you just go around like this, this fool, let me tell you. Y'all, he was crazy funny back in the day but <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about our personalities while we were dating each other I, I just remember you being funny you being like very romantical like you were so romantic I remember one time Valentine's Day I think it was like not 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 that I'm like a materialistic person but he would like do the cutest stuff like he had in his car he was like come out to the car and I opened the trunk up and it's gummy bears and hearts that say, I love you, like two pairs of shoes. <laughs> I think it was like some Tims and some Air Forces. Cause that, you know, I'm, I'm from up top. That's what we do, <laughs> Tims and Air Forces <laughs> all day. So yeah, and it was like some other stuff in there. I don't even remember like, but he was like very romantic, like just so random. And he still is like that today. Like I remember on my birthday, my 30th birthday, he comes in he act like he ain't got nothing, right? So I was just like, you know, okay. Cause I'm cause I'm more of a Valentine's Day person anyway. My birthday is just that what it is. Like I like give me something on Valentine's Day, we're gonna be good. <laughs> so he starts, he pulls out one item. I'm like, oh thank you. Now whole time he acting like he don't have nothing. Then pulls out another item. So he keeps talking to me, pulls out another item. Like he does stuff like that. And that's how he kind of was back in the day. Just very like thoughtful, romantic. And you know, I feel like he always had my back. Always have and always will. Like what I can remember about myself is just, I was real, like I'm always looking at the negative things about myself. And so where I can improve and, and it was just, I was just so angry. Like, <laughs> I, was I wasn't really... going to bring that up. Just trying to keep it positive. <laughs> I, I wouldn't call you angry. You was just real crazy. Like anything would set you off. I was really. I was just like immature back then. Like I just had a lot to learn about life, and I was like, I'm glad we got together so young. You know what I mean? So like you, I think you helped mellow me out. Mm. Like I credit you to calming down <laughs> <laughs> yeah you was i remember yeah i wasn't gonna bring that up but he, he brought that up so let's let's talk about it <laughs> no but yeah he, he was but through all that he was very lovable you know what i'm saying like he ain't never like 
act crazy with me. It was oh, just, uh, yeah, like no abuse or nothing like that. But he was just very, he was rough. He was rough. <laughs> he was rough. <laughs> I came from the, the streets, should I say. A rough, rough neighborhood, rough part of town. It's just, I, I had a rough mentality. I remember having to call your mom, God rest her soul. And she was like, tell Nate, I'm not coming to get him out of jail. <laughs> <laughs> that was at the uh, car dealership yeah. that day. I called her up. I was like, he's he's out of control right now. I can't do nothing with him. <laughs> and uh, she was like, I'm not coming to get him. <laughs> <laughs> but that was funny. How about my personality? What was I like? Dating, not married, dating. You were always just like a, a humble, mellow person. I think like... I had to meet you at that period of time. Like I say, you you calmed me down a lot. Yeah. Like I couldn't be that way around you. I had to make a change. Like, mm -hmm. like you weren't you weren't from Trenton, like in them rough neighborhoods like that. So I couldn't bring that into your world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So around high school, I was a junior in high school, and I think it was the summer, right? Mm -hmm. July 2005, we went to Atlantic City and he proposed and I said yes. And shortly after that, we broke up because like we were always breaking up in high school all the time. And it's crazy because pretty much half of my senior year, maybe more than half of my senior year, we weren't even really together like that. We were like very, it was touch and go. And for us to just decide to get married after that period, it was, I graduated high school June 13th, uh, 2006, and we got married the 29th of July, 2006. And obviously that was met with a lot of opposition from fam well, more so my family, was not very happy about it, not supportive at all. I remember they showed up to the wedding, sat in the back, some had sunglasses on. Like it was, that was a happy day, but that was also like, a terrible day at the same time like it's not terrible in the sense of it's just because I didn't I was 18 years old so I had zero ounces of support and that's when you need people the most right. in your life and so we ended up getting married we got an apartment in Hamilton New Jersey I that forget I this I forget that. the street but uh, anyway Lamont. Oh, Lamont Lamont yeah, Lamont. <laughs> Lamont and we lived there and I remember oh who was the meal I always picked you? Shrimp, broccoli, and yellow rice. Yep, it was good too, wasn't it? My favorite meal. <laughs> to this day, I love when you make shrimp and broccoli. Mm -hmm. You don't make the yellow rice as much as nah, you don't love me. I do. <laughs> always have, always will. But I'm trying to cut back on your carb intake. I got appreciate your, it. I got your back, man. It's just, it was, uh, it was some real difficult times going through that because I was going through so much emotionally without having support being young not really understanding the dynamics of a husband and wife growing up I saw a two parent or two grandparent household so I saw my grandfather go to work I saw my grandmother you know cook and clean and go to work and do all these things for him but I didn't see the behind the scenes the teamwork you know what I'm saying the private conversations that you have and like I said this is partly why I started Love Inspiry to talk about this stuff you know nobody's really talking about experience like all these older people that have been married 30 40 50 years you don't really see them encouraging younger couples and you know bringing real issues to the light you know i'm not one to hide from our mistakes um and that's what i'm we're getting ready to go into and talk about or you know the things that i've done wrong in my relationship because i want to help couples younger or older prevent that you know prevent make from making those mistakes and the only way i can do that is just to share my truth and tell my truth at the end of the day i feel like if my husband is okay with it if god is okay with it then to me it, what anybody else has to say really does not matter but i say all that to say that we ended up moving to georgia like a couple years later um for a short period during that time we after we got married i want to say like october like october we separated 
you know, my mom calls it, she was like, you know, y'all weren't, y'all just had a falling out. <laughs> she doesn't even call it what it was, but we'll talk more about that. And I'm not going to really get into that because we'll talk more about that in um, next, this Sunday's episode coming up. So, but, um, you know, moving to Georgia, it was met with a lot of adversity, being young, being miles and miles away from our families, having no no real support. You know, some of the churches absolutely helped us out a lot, but um, it was it was challenging. Although anybody familiar with Love and Spree knows that I am an advocate for uh, marrying young, but this is the only drawback that I have about young marriage. For example, somebody that has been living under their parents' care for 18 years. And all of a sudden, immediately after you leave your parents' house, boom, you're married. You don't really get to experience the uh, responsibilities that life presents. Like You don't get the chance to realize the importance of paying bills on time and, and things like that because all these things were done by your parents. All these things were done by the person that raised you. So when you get immediately go into a marriage, like you don't have the mindset yet that, yeah. man, I need to do this. Like yeah. nobody's going to do this for me. Yeah. So when you jump into that at such a young age and things come up that you're not prepared to handle, like you may take it out on your spouse or mm -hmm. you just may not be ready for it. Yeah. And and those are that's the only drawback that I have. I think maybe there should be some period of time where you experience life on your own. I don't say on your own because you can still be in a relationship with that person, but the responsibilities that life has, like the trial and error, the trials and tribulations that you may be Build up your strength, your own strength, yeah. that when you get into a relationship, you'll be strong for that other person. Right. Like anything happened before, I'm like, I'm calling, boom, I'm calling my parents trying to get a bail out. Right. And I think, I think you were definitely during that time we were sharing sandwiches off the dollar menu or, you know, we had a whole plethora of things going on, sleeping in motels. You were definitely a source of strength for me because I was so negative. Like, I complained so much. Because, and, you know, it was immaturity. And also, I didn't grow up financially bound. So, I had no idea what it felt like to experience this stuff. Right. You didn't either. But I'm just saying, like, I didn't, I was not accustomed to it at all. You know, I, my grandparents, my parents, I didn't go without and so for me, it was it was new territory of wait a minute, I can't I can't do what I want. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I can't go to the movie. We can't go on a date. Right. You know, like what? Now, I had been on my own for I want to say about three years at that point, but I didn't really struggle. Like right. I was on my own, but I always had a decent job. So. Yeah, you did. So this was new to both of us at mm -hmm. the same time. We were experiencing something that we never really experienced. Yeah. So it made us first rely on God, turn to God, and turn to each other. Mm -hmm. It got to a point where we were so in deep that as much help as we may have gotten from our parents, it got to the point where they couldn't help us anymore. Right. I mean, it's only but so much your parents can do for you. Shout out to Larry Roll, too. That's my father-in-law, man. That man mm -hmm. is a straight gift from the Lord. Like, yeah. I remember him. Tar tearing his uh, rotator cuff at the time, drove all the way to Georgia because he said we needed two cars. Right. And I think gave, we had it. And gave us a car. It gave us the car. <laughs> we didn't pay for too. it. He gave us the car. And, um, you know, that's just, like you said, at some point, they can't take care of grown adults anymore. You know what I'm saying? At some point. And then at some point, we stopped telling people stuff because... You don't want to become burdens. It's like, okay, you made this grown decision. Right. Handle your grown adult business. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and so that's what we were just trying to do. We were trying to handle it on our own. Trust God, you know, trusting each other. Like he always tells his, when he does weddings, turn inward. Right. And, uh, you know, I didn't always handle it the best. I'm not, I never shy away from that. But I've learned from the, the experience. And the biggest lesson for me, and I'm curious to know your biggest lesson, was 
you know, it's well, I'm probably about to say your biggest lesson um, because it was something that was brought to uh, brought to my attention as far as couples that haven't gone through anything. You can't say that your relationship will stand the test of time. You can't say that you will be together through anything if you haven't gone through anything. And I can truly say that with this man right here. We have been through everything, immaturity, financial stress, everything that you can think of with the exception of infidelity and um, abuse. And um, we've experienced it and we've gotten through it. So that's the biggest lesson for me is... Well, the biggest takeaway for me is just seeing that our love really is true. It really is solid. Like we we ha we stand on on the rock of Jesus, and that's that's what's getting us through. I think the biggest lesson for me, you know, in the in the world as far as just like life, be positive, is what I practice today because positivity. It. <laughs> I, I don't even want to get started on that because I'll go over into a tangent. Positivity is so crucial to your life. If you think negative, guess what? Negative is going to keep happening to you. Negative is going to keep coming your way. You have to be positive. And that was the biggest lesson that I've learned in that process. So now when things happen, when little things go awry, it's okay, how are we going to fix this? How are we going to come together? And even if I do fall off on a little tangent because I'm human, I have somebody in my corner that is reminding me, hey, we got this. We've been through it. I'm going to try to get biblical here for a second. Okay. <laughs> We're Christians. When the children of Israel uh, finally got right before the promised land, they had one more river to cross, literally, which was the Jordan River. And the Lord instructed Joshua that to take a representative out of each tribe, the 12 tribes of Israel. And when he had the Jordan River stand up on a heap, he told the children of Israel to reach down. Every tribe, every man from a tribe, reach down and grab a stone. And there's 12 stones, you put them into your land, into your jurisdiction when you get into the promised land. He said, and one day when your children ask you, and they walk by and see that stone and say, what's the meaning of this stone? You tell them. This stone represents how the Lord brought us through the Jordan River, brought us, in, and it was more than that. He brought us out of the land of Egypt. You can go back to all your troubles, and it is represented by this one stone. To me, all the tribulations that we went through in life, I can look back on them, and I can see that it was the Lord bringing us the whole time. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was him that was bringing us. And, and when I think about those things, it, it helps me look for the future yeah. uh, the tribulations when you can see that the Lord was with you at your lowest points it'll help you go on to know that even if I, I go into a valley in the future I know he's going to be right there because we know that he'll never leave us mm -hmm. or forsake us so ah. anywhere I find right. myself at I know that I'm here for a reason and I know God can bring me out I know he'll never leave us I know he'll never forsake us so no matter what we go through in a marriage or even in life, I know the Lord is going to be with us. Amen. That, that's a word, y'all. <laughs> with the church <laughs> on a Sunday. At. So, like he said, that all brought us to the now, right now, the movement by himself and the force when we're together. <laughs> that's where we're at now. And so, I want to end, you know, just talking about our favorite things about each other as a person and then as a husband or wife. I will go first, ladies first. So my favorite thing about you as a person is your humbleness, your um, ability, well, this is two things, but they go hand in hand, your ability to give people the benefit of the doubt because I'm, guys, I'm not like that. I don't give anybody the benefit of the doubt. If it look black to me, it's black. If it look white, it's white. There's no gray area with me. And with you, there's a gray area you try to meet. Not saying that I'm not compassionate, but... If somebody start acting funny towards me, it's not, well, maybe they're having a bad day. Like, that's where you come into place and you give me perspective of, well, maybe they just weren't feeling it. Like, you're not always feeling it either. What if somebody What if somebody thought that way about you and you just had a bad moment? And so I love that about, and I love also going back to your humblest, humbleness. I love that if you really wanted to, you could act stank. Like, you could be funny acting, but you don't. Like, you just, 
carry yourself with so much dignity and so much grace and just i just i love 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 that about you as a person as a husband now i love the fact that i love your leadership your ability to um like i used in my book one time to lead but also include me in your leadership not just say we finna do this, that, and the third without saying, well, babe, what do you think of that? And so I think I love your leadership. Like you have grown so much as a person and as a husband. So that's, that's probably my favorite things about you. I want to say my favorite. And you a little romantic. <laughs> you know, slipped up a little bit. You know, got too comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite things about you are your, your drive and your compassion, um, your desire to want to take what you have been through and help others. Uh, like the Lord told Peter, he said, Satan desires to sift you as wheat, mm -hmm. but I have prayed for you that your faith faileth not. Mm -hmm. And when thou has been converted, strengthen, strengthen your brother. A lot of people, when they come up, when they come to the realization that there's a more excellent way, when they realize, when they're finally walking in that more excellent way, they forget about everybody that was once mm -hmm. in the position that they were once in. When God elevates you, you should help people. And the thing I love about you is that you have a desire to not just be in yourself. You have a desire to help people that you know are struggling as you once struggled. And uh, as a wife, that motivates me as a husband to want to do better, to always want to live right, to always want to lead in the right way. A lot of people are are the times we're living in a lot of people complain about women not being submissive but are you leading them the right way mm, absolutely. followers will follow a good leader and not complain so be a good leader in life to those that are put in a position of leadership uh, like donald trump for example a lot of people don't want to follow donald trump don't even want to acknowledge him as their president because right. he's not a good leader right. So you motivate me to be a good leader every day. What's your, what's your favorite thing about me as a wife? I just said. Uh oh. <laughs> as a wife, you you motivate me to be a good husband. To try to be a good husband. I thought you were going to say something profound about me. That is profound. Cause not. I mean, it's profound. Good. It's profound, but I thought it was going to be about me. <laughs> 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 all right guys so we're going to end real quick we're going to talk about some growth some goals and where we see each other as a couple in the future for me i see us still growing elevating inspiring the world through love and just working together as a team i think it's so important that we as couples especially millennial couples help individuals understand that growth is a part of the relationship i was 18 he was 20, 21 when we got married and I'm 32 now he's 35 at the time of this recording so you know we have grown as you can imagine a tr tremendously and I'm so thankful that we were able to grow together instead of growing against each other because it's so easy to grow against each other in your relationship you know when you're finding everything that's wrong with the person everything that they're not doing right you know it's easy to grow against each other and i'm thankful that our goals align with one another we respect each other's personal boundaries and personal goals as well as our goals together as a couple and hopefully we can accomplish some of those goals next year I'm not gonna go into too much detail you just don't want to put stuff out there like that but you know hopefully we can continue to elevate and grow together as one and you know i see us doing big things in the future all for the glory of the lord you know and that's where i see us i see us daily committed to uh inspiring and helping people um uh, and growing start starting at helping individuals and then maybe one day being able to inspire the world yeah through love that's where i see us and uh, being committed to our vows and being committed to uh, our vocations and our callings and just staying focused. Right. That's where I see us. So, do you have any final words? God is able. He is able. He's able. He is able. All the time. All the time.
God is able. I'll see you guys all in the next video. Don't forget this Sunday, he'll be back to oh, talk what? about. Uh-uh. I didn't know. I got to look at my contract. I don't Listen, don't don't start. I, I, I didn't even see my Don't contract. start. I didn't know I was coming back. Well, I'm coming back, I guess. Guys, see you this Sunday on the Breakover series. See you next Really big. Just sit down. It's been you, a while. Oh my gosh. Do you what? really have to be so extra? Oh, you record? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. You're going to have to cut that out. How are you just going to move my set around? Damn. Yeah, like, right. Hit you in your face, don't it?